was what the program has produced and didn't do the work? I think the program sold itself. Okay. I see uh, those guys, you know, being around Melbourne, watching Melbourne, watching Corey, watching the production they had, and also learning about the history and tradition was very important. But uh, the addition is always an issue to be able to overcome. You know, guys from the South and. You're pulling them away from their families, their, their comfort zone. Uh, those guys have to trust you a lot to kind of pull them away from home. But it was a, it was an adventure to say the least. Some, some ups and downs. Uh, we were able to hold on. So. What's it mean to you to, to be here for another season? And, you know, you and Dave ran everything on these Vegas. Yeah. Fully staffed. You know, what's this experience like? I'm fired up, man. Um, obviously, the experience was was rough you know, when it initially happened. We were all kind of blindsided by uh, by the guy getting up and leaving. And, uh, I definitely had no clue. I was in a, in a home visit in South Carolina, and I got the news. But once uh, once the coaching change started, I kind of reached out and made it very clear I wanted to be here. I expressed the reason why I wanted to stick around and be here. So. I'm excited for the future. If you were blindsided, I imagine recruits were too. And if I remember correctly, Jordan committed before a head coach had been named. How unusual is that? And what did that tell you? I think it's crazy. You know, he committed the day after you yeah. know, uh, Coach A left, but I think it shows also that he wasn't just attracted to the coaching staff, which is obviously important. But I talk to recruits all the time about making sure you choose choose a school for the school, not just for the coaching staff. Because we we get fired, get hired, rehired somewhere else all the time, and you want to make sure you're going to be comfortable being no matter who comes in and goes you know, from the previous staff. Thank you, Anderson. Left. I think it was a Wednesday, and they went that Sunday. And even some of these guys were saying that three days was like you could wait. Every program yeah. was saying yeah. take a visit. Yeah. For you, what was it like to try and Hold on to guys when you knew everybody was going out. Well, we definitely lost some momentum. You know, it was a guy, uh, a couple of guys I was on the road recruiting at that time that we lost out on and, and may have lost out anyway because of it, but I thought it definitely added to it because we were in the home and telling a parent that, hey, we're going to take care of your son and trust us, and then out of the blue, um, your job is kind of uncertain. That definitely helped you know, rehearse the process. But like I said, I'm really excited about the guys we got on board and we're, we're in good shape. And the process of trying to figure out, I mean, you guys had a bunch of, all inherited a bunch of recruits. Right. A lot of those guys aren't here anymore. Right. Um, or won't be, did not sign today. How did the process of trying to determine which guys you were continuing to recruit and which guys did not? How, what went into that? Because I'm sure you were a part of that, yeah. having the knowledge of the, of the kids. Well, I think it's important for the entire staff to be on the same page while we, uh, we all sit down and watch the guys committed that were committed to us and some guys that were still available as a staff and kind of uh, obviously every coach has their own different take on the guys that they want and system they want to implement and, and the, the biggest thing with the coach is saying proof to the guys that the defense is going to be the same and the offense is going to remain you know, somewhat the same as well which that helped out you know, kind of retaining some of the guys on both sides of the ball. But, um, and obviously we made some, some, some choices, some other guys chose for us so we didn't have the option to keep them or not. And that's kind of how the, the process went about. Season and what he did and how people were able to see him on a national stage every week helped you going into a room. I mean, Brad mentioned my name like, hey, this guy went over 200 yards. No I think it's definitely hard to ignore. Uh, you know, when you're when you're running back recruiting, I said it from from day when I got the job. I think it's one of the top places in America to, to play tailback and, and coach running backs because of the, the history and the tradition and the commitment to uh, you know feeding the running back and, and helping keep those guys involved in the run game. So I think that definitely played a big factor into it. I think his humbleness when guys are around him, you know, to reach out to him and communicate with him. And when those guys are on campus, you pull him aside and talk to him and tell him his story and you know, what it was like to be a player away from me when I'm not there. I think that was huge in the process. Uh, 